So what would you do if your life kind of fell apart? Sarah Davison is the author of Leap, What Will We Do With The Rest Of Our Lives? And Diana Kirshner is a psychologist. Ladies, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Sarah, now you think that we all go through times, like as you call them, the narrows. I do. It's The narrows is the rough passage to the next part of life. It's dark. It's scary. I went through it myself, which is why I wrote Leap. But the good news is everybody I talk to after going through it found a way out to sunlight and new possibilities. It reminds me of that Dennis Hopper commercial I love so much. <laughs> what you need is a plan. you got to come up with a way to, to tackle this. Yeah, and so right. how do you suggest people start? I think there's one question that will help you, and I invite, I invite you and everyone listening to see what ri arises when I ask. If you knew the world was going to end in two days, what would you do? Now, a lot of people say, I'd gather my friends and family. One man said, I want to help people. A woman said, I want to sing. So I ask, are you doing that now? And I have a free workbook on my website, sarahdavidson.com, that will help people realize what is that fire inside. And now our new series, Turning Point, Second Acts, as the song says, what are you doing the rest of your life? Well, more and more baby boomers are asking that very question and realizing it's time for a change, maybe even a brand new city or country. There's very few times in your life when you can move, and this is one of them, when you suddenly have no children in school, you may not have a job, uh, and you are free to think, where would I really like to live, just for me? Sarah Davidson, author of Leap, What Will We Do With The Rest Of Our Lives, left her life in L.A. to replant herself here, idyllic, Boulder, Colorado. I was sitting by myself in the house with no work, no kids, nothing on my calendar, and I thought, maybe it's time to move. The great thing about moving at this point in your life is that you're not stuck. So if it doesn't work out, you can go somewhere else. Turning Point, Second Act, all about how to prepare for the next chapter of your life. And today's topic is saving the money you need for the Second Act to make it really what you want it to be. How much do you need to make your dreams come true? And how do you get to it? There's no way to know exactly how much money you're going to need for this time of life because it's unpredictable. You could have a health crisis, your pension plan could go broke, or you could be forced to retire long before you plan to. The fact is, it's important to save, it's important to invest for this time of life. Our generation are workaholics. And suddenly, the idea of not working at all, I, I don't think that's very attractive to a lot of people. There's lots of new models that we're going to create. We are the first group who has arrived at this age, 50s and 60s, in such vast numbers, in such great shape. Good evening. Welcome to the Tattered Cover Bookstore on Colfax Avenue. Thank you so much for coming out this evening. Well, getting on Oprah, as you know, is like winning the lottery. There's just no way to do it, for, no way to know for sure that you have any chance of it, and your chances are one in a million. But magazines, I had worked in the magazine business most of my life, on and off. And I went to my agent and I said, let's submit it to Time and Newsweek. And my agent said, oh, they don't, they don't do book excerpts. And I said, yes, they do. And I made a list of all the books they'd excerpted. And she said, well, I don't have any contacts at Time or Newsweek. So I went home, and I looked online, and I knew that Newsweek has a section called the Boomer Files. And every once a month, they print some big special, usually kind of superficial, but it's about boomers and their interests. And I called up Newsweek, and I said, who edits the Boomer Files? And they gave me a name, Alexis Gelber. And then I Googled her, and I found out that both she and I had gone to the Columbia School of Journalism, and she was married to the editor of Newsweek. <laughs> <laughs> so now I call Newsweek back, and I say, I happen to be a contributing editor of O, the Oprah magazine, and I use it a lot. And so I called up and said, hi, I'm calling from Oprah magazine. I want to send Alexis Gelber an email. What's your email address? So they give me the address, and I send her a cold email. And I say, I know you by reputation, and maybe you know me. I've written these books, and I have this new book, and I think it would go great in the Boomer Files. 24 hours later, not even, I get an email back from her saying, of course, I'd love to see it. I, I know your work, and I'd love to see the book. Have your agent send it over. So I sent my agent an email saying, yay, Newsweek wants to see it. 
So tell her she has to make a decision quickly because we've got other people who are interested as well. And I push send, and at that moment I realize I sent it not to my agent, <laughs> but back to Alexa Skelber. <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, I finally got a break, and I just blew it. It's one of those moments when you wish you could roll back the clock and stop the computer, but once the email goes out, there's no getting it back. And I was just in agony. Well, luckily for me, the editor had a sense of humor, and she sent it back to me and said, I think you meant this for somebody else. <laughs> so we sent her the book, and she, within a week, she emailed me back and said, you know, we'd love to do an excerpt. I think it would work really well. And I was really intrigued by this phrase that you use, called the narrows. So I'd like you to write a piece called the narrows and you know, take a little bit from the beginning of the book and the middle and the end and kind of give us the whole sweep, but really focus on the narrows. So fine, I'll do anything she asks me to do. So I wrote it and they ended up doing a four page spread. They sent a photographer out to Boulder to pictures of me in the snow. And they did, ran, they, it was a whole big thing. And when it hit the wires, because it, it went online before Newsweek ever arrived in anybody's home, suddenly I got thousands of emails on my website. And before this, a good day on my website was five or six emails. Yeah. <laughs> suddenly I'm getting you know, thousands in 24 hours. And the theme, what everybody said was, thank you. God, someone has put a name to what I'm going through. So I want to inspire you and urge upon you that this is a time for incredible creativity and risk-taking and imagination. I recently, uh, about a month ago, did an interview with Diane Sawyer for a magazine, and she's 61. And I said to her, how do you feel when people say, 60's the new 40? <laughs> and she said, that's not true, sorry. 60 is the new 60. <laughs> 